The Lord be with you. It's great to have you here. In fact, one of you uh, mentioned that it'd be great if we were going to sing uh, "Tis Good Lord to Be Here." Uh, but we are not singing that as our opening song today, because uh, today is Trinity Sunday. So we're going to be focusing upon the songs that have to do with the Trinity. Uh, it's great to have those of you who are here in person. It's great to have people who are uh, watching online as well. Uh, the camera that's back there is what Pastor Dan and I have been focusing on uh, throughout the whole time of recording. So now that we have you here, the people who are watching online will have the opportunity of seeing us look at you, which is a wonderful uh, thing for us. Since some of you um, have hearing aids or even lip read and so forth, we will not be having our masks on when we're up here because we want to make sure that you are able to see us projecting and, and all those different things. When the time comes for us to give you communion, I'll put my mask on and I will give you communion standing here. Pastor Dan's going to be actually way down on the other end. Uh, we're going to do this side first. The ushers will usher you through. Then we're going to come to this side and Pastor Dan will move over here. Uh, we're only doing individual cups uh, today as well. Since this is Trinity Sunday, it is a Sunday in which we give God thanks that he is a mysterious God. He comes to us, is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which of course is a great mystery. And yet, he is the God who loves us, who cares for us, who has saved us by his grace, and we give him thanks and praise for that. So you're going to notice that we're going to be doing a lot of singing about the Trinity and we're going to be reading the Athanasian Creed. We're going to be confessing that as well, which explains the triune God. So our service for today is so that we are not singing a lot. We're going to be singing and we're going to be speaking. So the verses that you find printed both in your bulletin as well as what's recorded up here uh, or appearing on the screens will show that some will be sung, some will be spoken, uh, the one thing that we will be doing differently is the opening hymn today is a doxological hymn. It starts first with singing glory to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we're going to sing that one as well as the last verse, and we will be singing that as well. I think as far as other announcements, we're happy we have one graduate from high school with us today, and that's Megan. We will be looking forward to having some of the other ones coming as well. We're going to show uh, Megan as well as the other high school graduates uh, information, confirmation verses, and the like in our, during our time when we would normally uh, be receiving the offering. Hopefully you had an opportunity to place your offering into the box as you came in. If you didn't, uh, it will be moved up here uh, on the outside as you will be exiting uh, this way too. The guidelines for the state say you're really not supposed to stay inside here and visit. Well, obviously, this kind of goes against what we as body of believers really want to be able to do, but we do you know, care about each and every one of you as much as we possibly can uh, to prevent this virus from affecting any of us. So with that being said, well, let's stand and greet one another. Uh, excuse me. Let's not stand and greet one another. Can you tell I've said that a lot, you know, in, in terms of my uh, memory banks? Okay, so let's stand as we sing the opening hymn.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity in the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the Old Testament reading, which is from Genesis chapter 1 all the way through uh, chapter 2, verse 4, part A. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and the darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the, the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and for years, and let the, them be lights in the and let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly in the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures, and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over 
the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit and you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the heavens and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every good green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw that everything he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had, he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have part two of the Athanasian Creed, which we will stay seated. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, the Holy Spirit is another, but the Godhead of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet, there are not three eternals, but one eternal, just as there are. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son almighty, the Holy Spirit almighty. And yet there are not three almighty, but one almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person of God as Lord, so also we are prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. We continue with our second reading. It's a pickup of where we left off yesterday, or last week with Acts chapter 2, starting with verse 14 and then continuing with 22 through 36. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore, 
my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn an oath with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ this Jesus, whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the Alleluia and the verse as we speak it together. And let's stand for that, and then we'll stay standing for the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be, or you may be seated for the hymn of the day. And we will uh, sing and speak that as it's written on the side.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Please join with me in a word of prayer. We give you thanks this day, Heavenly Father, Jesus, our Savior, Holy Spirit, our Comforter, that you are here in our midst. And we pray that you will never leave us as you promise to walk with us, to provide for us, to strengthen us in our faith and in our walk. As we seek to be your disciples, as we seek to be your witnesses and share the truth of what you have done for us and for so many other people in their lives. Because we are forgiven. We are given this promise of an eternal life. And we pray, help us to share these truths with people who are yet to believe in you and join us as we look forward to the promised eternity in your presence forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today the theme for this sermon is beginning. As you think about beginning something, you know you have to start. Somebody can say begin, but until you take that first action, you really have not participated in the beginning. Today we gather together for a new beginning in this sanctuary. It's different than I believe any of us have ever experienced. For some, you might remember the days when there were no pew cushions. And that is what we have again today because of this virus. This unseen virus, this beginning, this catalyst for change, not only here in White Bear Lake, but throughout our world. This virus that we cannot see has produced such a change in our lifestyle, in our world, that many of us have been caught off guard trying to figure out what do we do differently? How do we react? How do we cope? How do we live with these expectations, requirements, if you will? And so it is that we try, we have learned to cope, learned to adjust. We have seen people use their electronic tools more than they ever thought they ever would, more than they ever thought they were capable of. We've seen all sorts of ingenious ideas appear for people to do. How many people have creatively made masks and offered to make them? How many people have made shields, these plastic shields? In our fellowship hall, lower level of this place, we had people come in, volunteer to make shields for health workers. Because a local man contacted us with a design as he was able to get different manufacturers to provide those supplies. And so things have been changing. We have been in a new beginning, and we, of course, have been looking forward to this day when we could have a new beginning. We've been watching, hoping that things would change sooner. But... The reality is, we are here. And some of you are still watching online. And if you're still watching online, I want you to know that we are so thankful that you are in partnership with us in sharing this good news of Jesus Christ. And if this is the first time you're hearing about Jesus, I praise God that this service is a blessing for you as we Share that we believe in Jesus, who was sent by God the Father, who 
came and lived and died for you and me and who continues to be with us now and always. We have an amazing God who loves us and cares about us and who's been with us even in the midst of not only beginning but also ending. But we know there are people who have gone through some very difficult times during this COVID crisis, this pandemic. People who have had loved ones in the hospital and have been unable to go be with them. And some of those people have died alone, without family or friends. But if they believed in Jesus, they did not die alone, for God was with them. And so it is, we are here today. And yet as we are here today, we also know that another beginning took place less than a couple weeks ago. As many of us viewed George Floyd being murdered by a Minneapolis cop. And I don't know about you, but I know as I watched, I was saddened. I can't imagine what took place. And what an impact that has had in my life and in in others' lives. As we realize that God has created us all. It doesn't matter what race we are. It doesn't matter what gender we are. We are all created by our God who loves each and every one of us. Yet we know we live in sin. And because we live in sin, things like this are going to happen. And all we can do as Christians is to examine ourselves, repent of our sins, receive from God the forgiveness he gives to us as we come to him in repentance, and believe we're forgiven and seek to make change in a positive ways. And so we saw protests, peaceful protests, seeking to make statements, seeking to make change, but those changed into riots and destruction of businesses and properties and lives and so many different things that we begin to say, where are you, God, and why? And God comes to our aid. And he gives us hope. And he does bring about restoration and order in the means that he has provided for us. And where we go from here, is yet to unfold before us. For this is another beginning. Our Old Testament reading starts out in Hebrew with the words Bereshit, Barach, Elohim. Bereshit, in the beginning. It's not in a beginning, it's in the beginning. God created. You see, for us to take a look at things beginning in our lives, we need to go back to the beginning. (laughs) Because what took place in the beginning, when all there was, was God. And God created. 
He created the heavens. It's anything and everything above the earth. And he created the earth. The autumns. And so it is Moses wrote this down for us. Because God inspired Moses to write this down for us. God told Moses to write down these words for us so we can understand this foundation that he created in the best possible way for us to understand this mystery. But imagine how it was to be there when all you had was God in the beginning creating the heavens and the earth, although there was nothing there until God created the heavens and the earth. And God tells us that he took this earth that was without form and void. It, wasn't, it was empty. And yet the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the deep, over the waters. This is the Holy Spirit. This is that third person of the Trinity that many of us don't even think comes into the world until we get to Pentecost, which we celebrated last week. But notice, the Holy Spirit's here. And we confess that in the Creed, and we're going to confess that again in our Athanasian Creed. And not only was the Holy Spirit there, the next words are, let there be light. And there was light. Yes, the word was spoken. And who was this spoken word? We are told in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And then in verse 14, we are told, and the word became flesh, and he lived among us. And we saw his glory, glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The second person of the Trinity, the divine Son of God, is the Word of God that was also there at Trinity. And that's why this Old Testament reading was chosen for today, this Trinity Sunday. Three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They support our gospel reading. And that's why this Old Testament reading was also chosen. Our gospel reading in Matthew's gospel is one of the few places, as we have in our Old Testament reading, that you find all three persons of the Trinity mentioned so succinctly together. And I mentioned this two weeks ago in my sermon as we talked about the ascension as Jesus was ascending. That's the context of this text in our gospel reading. But before we go there, I'd like to acknowledge the fact that today we are giving God thanks for our high school graduates. And as we think about our high school graduates, we recognize that you've had a unique year. It's more unique than any other high school graduates have ever experienced, I would imagine. And although it is unique, and by the way, you probably had a unique graduation ceremony. I think all the different schools have had unique graduation ceremonies from what I understand. One of the things you did not have was a commencement. That's what we usually call the graduation ceremony where you were able to walk on the stage and you had the speakers and all these other types of things, right? Are you aware that the word commencement actually means beginning? It's kind of like confirmation. You know how we talk about in confirmation, you confirm your faith, but you haven't graduated, you haven't learned everything you need to know. So it is in confirmation, you continue to learn to grow in your faith, so it is that you have to continue to learn when you leave high school. And of course, Megan, you're going to keep on learning as you're joining the military. 
as well as going to school. So many different ways for all of us to continue to learn throughout our life. And so it is, there are challenges that you face. And yet those challenges are very similar to other graduates from high school. It's going to be different next year. You're going to have a new beginning. Others are going to have a new beginning as well. And yet, thankfully, God is going to be with you. Well, remember three years ago, you were here. Things were a lot different, but you were standing up along the communion rail as you confirmed your faith. You confirmed that faith that your parents, sponsors, and others spoke for you when you were baptized. And obviously, you went through classes with us so that you were able to learn and grow in that faith, just as so many of us have throughout the years. And one of the things that you confirmed, although we didn't have you confirm this specifically, were what the Apostle Peter spoke in our second reading for today. The second reading for today was Peter's sermon on Pentecost. Last week, Pastor Dan preached about the Pentecost and what that meant and means for us today. Well, this particular section of the scriptures tell us it was God's plan. Listen to this, verses 22 to 24. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and you killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. The bottom line, is that an innocent man, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, was put to death for you and for me. And that was part of God's plan. Part of God's plan that takes us back to Genesis 3. Remember Genesis 1 and 2, we've got this beautiful, perfect creation, and then Adam and Eve sin, and God has to condemn Adam and Eve and you and me and all humanity to death because of their rebellion. And so it is, we are all sinners. So many of us would seek to turn away from what God would have us do. God calls us to repent when we sin and receive his forgiveness. And he gives us that forgiveness in this bread and the wine in his body and his blood that was shed for us on that cross, that we might be forgiven and restored by our amazing and wonderful God. And he sends us to be his witnesses. Peter said we are witnesses of what Jesus has done And you and I are witnesses of what Jesus has done in our lives. We seek to tell the truth. But how well have we done? Hopefully all of us can say, I've done it well at times. I've shared this truth. I've loved people in my actions so that they can see Jesus in what I've done, what I've said. But we also come to confess that I've not done as I ought, as I could have. And the good news is, God says, I forgive you. You see, there's an amazing thing about our God because he loves each and every one of us. And he said to us this gospel reading, Jesus is ascending into heaven, and he says, Authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And I'd like to just take a look at this great commission, this command, this mission that Jesus has sent us out on. It's an amazing one, because notice what he says. 
be disciples who make disciples, followers of Jesus. And do this making disciples by being a disciple, by going. Go is not an imperative or command. Make disciples is. Going tells us what we are doing, what we need to do to make disciples. We need to be going. And we need to be baptizing in the name of the Trinity. We need to be teaching what we know to be true from what Jesus has taught us. And we know there's one who really doesn't want us to do that, and that's the devil. In all of this time that many of us had to be alone or limit our exposure to other people, the devil wanted the church, Christians, to keep silent, to live in fear, to live without hope. And yet, praise God that he has given us tools that we might be able to keep you and others encouraged with hope and love and encouragement to share this good news of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And you know the amazing thing about what God has done for us in giving us this great mission is he's given us bookmarks, if you will, on each end of this mission. He starts off by saying, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Have you ever heard anybody say, I've got all the authority in heaven and on earth? If anybody said that to you, you'd think this person's either a crackpot or he's serious. Jesus was serious because he as the Son of God and Son of Man could make this claim. God has given him this authority that you and I possess when we go as his witnesses and make disciples by baptizing and teaching. And he also told us in the end, I'm with you always, always, to the end of the age. So as we make this beginning, as we make new beginnings, some things stay the same. During this COVID pandemic, I have found comfort in these words, as I pray you have, that Jesus is with us. We may sometimes feel we are all alone, but we are not, because Jesus says, I am with you, and he is. It's his promise. And may we go forth confidently, sharing this good news making disciples as God empowers us by the Holy Spirit to do so. Amen. Please stand if you are able. The peace of God which passes our understanding guard and protect us in the Christian faith unto life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to join me as we sing the last verse of On Galilee's High Mountain. We continue with the Athanasian Creed.
we speak together. The Father is not made, nor created, nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeding. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another, none is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal. So that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the Trinity. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and he is man born from the substance of his mother in this age. Perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh, equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as a rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Please be seated. At this time, we will have an opportunity to watch the graduates' uh, information as a part of our offertory. And hopefully, those of you who are watching online will have an opportunity as well to give an offering as the Spirit of God moves you in thankfulness for the blessings you have received by texting any dollar amount to 84321 and be sure to select South Shore Trinity or online at http sstbl.org slash give and we can also receive from you an offering in the mail. At this time, we will now have an opportunity to watch the slideshow of the graduates.
Come on up, Megan. Got to find the right book. Come on. Here, you look in those two, and I'll look in this one, these two. Guess we could have done this earlier. Sorry. You got it. Good. That's it? All right. We're keeping our social distance as much as we can, of course. Um, congratulations, virtual hug. And uh, you can take one of these prayer shawls. The prayer shawls are for you. Uh, along with uh, the rest of the graduates. And these are something that our ladies made, and you're going to obviously uh, be in many different places. And sometimes you may just kind of feel like you are alone, but know that you are not. You are in our prayers, and obviously, as God has said, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Congratulations. Let's give Megan and the rest a hand.
Please stand. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve the true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Remain standing as we sing our closing hymn and then recognize that the ushers will be ushering you out and you will be going out uh, that door. So we'll, we'll uh, also start with the um, left side, right side as well. We continue. Listen. Listen. Jesus gave his mandate, the good news that he came to save us and set us free. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen. Listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Let none be forgotten throughout the world. In the triune name of God, go and baptize. Listen. Listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Help us to be faithful, standing steadfast, walking in your precepts, led by your word. Listen, listen, God is calling, through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy.